so but you just can't you just can't find like Macanese dupes anywhere else I don't think I'm not going to do dupes anywhere else. Yeah. Wait, what's a what's a dupes? Like a <laughs> dupe, like a copy, like a duplicate. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> a A four, A four. Oh, A four. <laughs> yeah. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Outcast here, and today we have a special guest uh, from Macau, just Ooh. like us from the eight five three. Except she is more Macanese than we are, because well, let's let her explain, shall we? Yeah, let's welcome introduce yourself, yeah. Inesh. Hi, everyone. My name is Inesh. Um, I am Macanese, but I wouldn't say that I'm more Macanese than anybody else. Yeah, because right? you know the the isn't it like the Macau and Portuguese that kind of makes the Macanese, right? <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that, right? So I am exactly half Portuguese, half Chinese. But like when I was thinking about this, I was like, I've got a friend who's like half Chinese, half English, but like she wouldn't really introduce herself any other way aside from being Macanese. And I'm like, I feel like she's a Macanese as well. So, you know, yeah, I guess we, I mean, we obviously would love to just be like, yeah, we're Macanese, but then we would always have to explain, like, actually, officially, mm. right? Like, for people, most people, they recognize Chinese, Portuguese, and Macanese. But yeah, it's like, for other people who are from Macau, what do you say then? <laughs> like, what's, what's our title? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, I guess, I guess, like, the classic recipe. Yeah. Classic recipe. That's true, though. Wow. So, we all kind of grew up in the same time in Macau, right? Mm -hmm. Like, are you 1995? I am, yeah. Ah, we're the pigs. I was so cute, all day. So cute. All right. Um, and we went to different schools, but I feel like we kind of probably crossed paths somewhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? If the, to anyone that doesn't know Macau, like, it's the smallest city ever. So for sure, we'll see each other. The only difference with Inesh and us is that she went to a international school, right? But we'll get into that a little bit later. But like, what's up with you? Like, um, updates on life? Like, we see you've been uh, making Cantonese reels. Ah, it's cool. Yeah. yeah, I've been I've been trying to dabble into like the content creation side of things. I've seen a lot of people do it. You guys obviously do it. And I feel like it's it's a great inspiration. And it's something that's like been lingering at the back of my mind to be like, I need to try it out. So I was like, I'm going to give it a go. Um, yeah. I think that's what I've done. I think it's it's pretty fun. Um, and it's nice interacting like with people who are so shocked by the fact that I can speak Chinese. Mm. I think that, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Because now you're you're in the UK, right? You're working. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, yeah, I live in the UK. I live in Manchester. Um, I work in banking, um, um, like a pretty classic corporate job, I guess. So smart. So smart. I see. When did you move there? I like. I know. I don't know if you like studied there for call for university. I yeah, I moved. I moved to the UK when I was eighteen. So I've been here nearly ten years now, um, mm. and yeah, I've stayed ever since. Got a job oh, after dating, and here I am. Why? <laughs> Why the UK? I think, like many of my classmates who went to the international school that I went to, we did like a British curriculum, didn't we? So yeah. it, it kind of like made sense for us to come to the UK. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So the Macau Angela can call it. We call it MAC. That's why. <laughs> Angela can call it the Green School. We go. <laughs> yeah. You guys were like the first ever, like the first class too, right? In that in that school, like that international school. We were the lab rats. Yeah, the <laughs> lab rats of the school. I mean, it's a good school. Like it's it's well known and and yeah. So, how was that like? Like transferring? Well, you know, from Macau to UK back then when you were eighteen. Like, was it a, a big change? The food way more expensive. I bet. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think like like anybody else who's moving away from home at eighteen, like the settling down is probably quite challenging um, as it is. I think I probably found making friends one of like the hardest things moving yeah. to a new country. But 
I I mean I definitely liked the UK which is why I've stayed 10 yeah years. 10 years <laughs> oh time passes by so fast what, what did you like I guess did you ever thought about going back moving back home or did you like are committed to UK um I haven't thought about going back I I feel like I'm quite happy with like the opportunities that I've had in the UK and I think because of that I've never really thought about you know what other opportunities I could have had at home because I'm quite happy with the options that I've had here yeah Um, yeah so it's easy to like as an I guess immigrant to like live and and settle in the UK I think if you've got I think if you've got the right passport, it is, yeah. Oh, um, that's yeah. fair. <laughs> right? Portuguese? Are you Macanese, but Portuguese or Macanese? Portuguese, yeah, Portuguese. Uh, European. Okay, okay. So mm-hmm. I think if you've got European, it's probably quite nice. easy. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Wow. How was it like growing up in Macau for you? I mean, I mean, clearly, like, we did grow up in the same city, but obviously di- everybody has this different experiences. Share yours. Yeah. Um. I think I think Macau was a quite a good place to grow up in. Um but because it's so small, it naturally comes with like safety. Um and yeah. I think that's something that's that I kind of realized since moving to the UK when I see other kids um like in their teenage years, I'm like I then put myself in their shoes and I'm like, wow, Macau was so small, like so many risks that people in this country maybe have to think about we didn't really have to think about like, like, like what like examples um like walking home from the club at like 3 a.m I like, know that's actually one of the things I brag about Macau like I would be like in high school and then it was 3 a.m wearing a really nice dress a girl by myself and I'd feel completely safe oh yeah, yeah. there's like over here or I think anywhere else actually I'm not sure that would be the case. Mm -mm, No, dude, like here, I can't imagine to the pricing like of a drink alone. You know, uh, I don't even know why people would want to go out here. Plus, the the drinking age here is 21. So I also don't understand that. I still get ID'd now just because I have the (laughs) Asian Asian don't raise it. Yeah, thank you. But (laughs) it's crazy. I I can't remember the last time I was ID'd, but... (laughs) Not gonna lie, I wish I wish someone would ID me every now and then. <laughs> in America, there's the there, it's more probable. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. It's it's definitely like I feel like we grew up in a e- like very easily because, like you said, yeah. like it's so small. And even going in a bus, right? If you go get down the wrong bus stop, it's still okay, you know. Even though you go back, go to the other island, Macau, like, you yeah. know, you could still come back after 10 minutes, like, you know, like, with a bus. I don't, I don't know if, like, anybody ever said this to you guys when you were growing up, but, like, a lot, I, I used to hear a lot of people say, like, oh, Macau is a bubble. The outside world isn't like that. And until I moved away, I never really knew what that meant. I actually, like, growing up, I never heard that, but that's that okay. probably makes sense. I was one of the person that's probably saying that you know like like or or no not not saying like outside of, but like people saying it to me and i don't believe like uh, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah they're like okay sure yeah all right you went out and like got all um you know inspired and now oh cool you're so woke oh i don't know like stuff like something like that but now I, i'm that person <laughs> i i feel you i'd go back and say the same thing yeah yeah but it, yeah, and I would like compare it to honestly, like anyone in the world that has been in their like, you know, neighborhood or like even area for so long. Like well, that's, that's, true, that's yeah. more and more I learned that even in America, there's a lot of Americans that don't even have passports because they can just it's travel true. around yeah, there. And yeah. yeah, that's mind blowing to me. But it's kind of like weird because Macau is like its own place. So mm-hmm. like. In a sense, it's it's not big enough to be like its own kind of state or country, but it's yeah. also like small enough where it's like a neighborhood, you know, like it's like a neighborhood. You go on the bus, you'll you definitely see someone, you know, definitely, definitely. <laughs> like, I kind of like that. Like I still I still try. To, I feel like I still try to do that these days. I'm like, oh, when I'm just like in the area around my house, I'm like, oh, well, I bump into someone I know. But like mm-hmm. the odds of that happening here is so not the same as in Macau like you go to McDonald's you go to 
well, I live near Sunmyo when I was in Macau. Like you go to Sunmyo, and you would run into people like a teacher or like a classmate. But like that, that stuff doesn't happen. That's oh, <laughs> it's so sad. Did you did you learn um, Cantonese with your mom only, or was it through school? Um, mostly at home. My mom spoke to us in Cantonese. So, because in your in school, you guys didn't learn like Cantonese. No. What about Mandarin? We did Mandarin, yeah, but. I think obviously we had some like friends who spoke Cantonese to each other, yeah, so yeah. we still use Cantonese in the school. Some of you, guys. well, you guys yeah. went to school. Yeah, we went to full on Chinese school. I guess for me, I transferred, but like growing up, we went to a local Chinese school. It's like the other way around. You guys use Cantonese to like you know talk your lingo. For us, we speak English. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, 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 that's true. <laughs> and they're like, "I'm just talking, man." <laughs> we have to say it probably in Cantonese though. Well, yeah, because like in in Mandarin class, like well, we called it like Putonghua, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Mandarin class, like people would speak Cantonese to each other, and the teacher would. <laughs> Did you actually study like in in MAC? Is it simplified Chinese or can, uh, traditional Chinese? Uh, traditional. Oh, okay. For Mandarin so- class too. Yeah, I think I think there were two like there were two levels. So like you had Mandarin as a first language and then Mandarin as a second language. For those people who were in Mandarin as a second language, they learned simplified. For those in the first language, learned traditional. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I mean, yeah, it's like it's kind of different, right? Like uh growing up in like a Chinese Chinese school and then international school I feel like sometimes we get jealous of the more the more relaxed part of being international school like in terms of like rules and stuff but at the same time like I feel like being in international school maybe they give you more opportunity to like think outside of the box you know like more like writing kind of thing I feel like the traditional Chinese is very like um uh, yeah. Su, uh, memorizing things and like yeah. not too much like oh express your opinion on this oh. you know Maxi. Maxi. you guys had Maxi. we also had Maxi though oh Maxi mm, yeah dictation yeah they yeah. also have because I guess like because you guys are also taught by like a chi- Chinese teacher yeah. or at Chinese mm. right Chinese class and yeah I think it's like the mentality of these Chinese teachers like that's how they teach because you know like I I, I met foreign teachers that that have said like in 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 like outside area like teaching like this would be bad because they're just like talking you know they're not like that's true you know like like actually involving themselves or asking questions but yeah maybe yeah, it yeah. changed over the years though but, I, mean, in- I hope it did right because i don't know i feel like reflecting back i feel like the interactive learning is probably like lacking yeah but i i just feel like it's probably a better way of learning right mm, so true yeah. i mean for sure yeah. for does, sure does like do people in the uk know about macau um good question right i think it really depends it really depends on like the type of person that you're speaking to okay. um because i have i have two brothers they also live in the uk and they're okay. often Telling me that like nobody knows where I'm from, nobody gets where Macau is. They make jokes about Macau being a cow. Things I know like, my hey. cow, my cow <laughs> is so annoying. Or Moscow, Moscow. <laughs> yeah, Moscow. <laughs> it's in Russia. <laughs> like you don't look Russian. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyways, I I think like it depends. Like at work or like in the businessy world, loads of people know where Macau is because they associate it with like an Asian Las Vegas. But I think mm. Macau being featured in movies more and more frequently these yes. days also helps like the general public know about this Good. city. Um, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I guess so. Even though like in, in, they had it in like a Marvel movie, right? But they didn't really mention like Macau or did they? I don't know. I don't remember if they mentioned yeah, it. Was it Shang-Chi, right? Yeah, Shang-Chi. <laughs> it Actually, is. what does Shang-Chi stand for? Like, I don't know the Chinese word for it. Shang-Chi? Shang-Chi. Isn't that a name? Is it? <laughs> I never thought about this. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, right? Yeah, like... Shang. Yeah, Shang-Chi. It's a name. Oh, yeah. It's a name. That's, yeah, that's the name, Shang-Chi. Like, I guess it means... Probably- I don't even know that word, Shang. 
Isn't it so like um means helpful. esteemed or valued. Yeah. And then the 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 haze of like energy. Chi. Like valued energy. All right. Sat shang chi. Okay. Wow, valued energy, like like being appreciated. Someone <laughs> saying, I'm proud of you. I think that's right. It's like um esteem, like respect. Just recently recorded an uh, episode with Sheldon um, Kento from Mando. Kento Mando. Yeah, you know his parents are from Macau? No like, way! Yeah! It's the so thing. <laughs> so freaking cool. Yeah, and we were just talking about Shang-Chi and how he was like so upset that um, it was Mandarin. Like they it were speaking a, Mandarin uh, there. Cantonese. Yeah, they could have <laughs> ah, used Cantonese. But, you know, like in UK, how often do you, do you get to use your Cantonese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not at all. Not very these days. Not very at all. I think that's probably why I also started making like Cantonese videos so that I can give myself an opportunity to practice Cantonese because mm. I don't use it like except for when I FaceTime my mom every now and then. But even so, I feel like I'm speaking in Chinglish, man. Like I can <laughs> hardly convey what I'm trying to say fully in Cantonese. <laughs> I know. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's so true. That's literally why we, how we started our podcast because yeah. we didn't have anyone else to speak Cantonese to. Like our time zones are so different back home. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's literally us like just just practicing <laughs> with each other. So yeah. most people around you don't know that you speak Cantonese. Um, not really. <laughs> I don't use it. It's like it. it's not really brought up, right? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Do you speak Unless... Mandarin? No. Oh, I used no? to. I, I, you, well, you mean like in general? Yeah, oh, in general, yeah, I speak it, but like I don't speak it my day to day. Yeah, yeah. It's like when people ask you, like, if you speak Chinese, you know, like when you say yes, it's like, oh, they mean Mandarin. Well, yeah. I would say like a little, a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Guangdong, wow, okay, perfect. Like <laughs> yeah. oh. What about um Chinatown? Yeah. Do you have yeah. one near you? Mm -hmm. We do. We do. We definitely have a Chinatown in Manchester. Most people in Manchester actually are from Hong Kong, um, those who run Chinese businesses. So most people in Chinatown speak Cantonese to each other. Nice. Obviously, with like the political issues going on in Hong Kong, there's been like a huge influx of Hong Kongese immigrants in Manchester. I see. It's, yeah. it's nice to like walk around the street and like bump into someone from Hong Kong. Like that part of it is nice. Do you say do you say anything like if you hear Cantonese? No, but it's just so nice when you're in the supermarket. I know, I know. I don't want to startle them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's just nice to hear it. You know, it feels. I like know. It's like music. It's so true. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, like, you, do you? I don't. Is there like things that you miss about Macau? I don't know. Like, I know, I know. You said like in the UK for you, like it's going pretty well. You haven't thought about yeah. going back, but like. Is there like specific things that you think about? Like, oh, it'd be nice. I mean, I think it'd be nice to visit. Mm. It's nice to visit. I think there's like something about like mixed culture in Macau that doesn't really exist anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to say in the world, but I'm sure it does. It's just like where I live now. Macau is such a mixed culture place. Like, that's true. Really get that. really I mean, get that in other places, I think. No, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, even though well, I'm in America, like this literally is the most like mixed cultured place. But it's yeah. just so like people make it a, a thing. I like it's just like, yeah. oh, your English is so good, or like, oh, you're <laughs> yeah. you're from Asia. Like it's just it's so like focused on that. But while in Macau, like you can see literally so many types of like um yeah. ethnicities, but no one is like you know. Oh, you yeah. like blah blah blah. Even me when I speak like such good Cantonese, like I I would get like maybe like a little like oh well, like but Ooh. but they just go by their day, you know. It's not like oh okay, like you know. Yeah. So it's like really like normalized or accepted, yeah. I guess. Normalized, yeah. it's true. Yeah. yeah. Did you I mean, ever go ahead? No, no, you go on. I was gonna ask if you ever thought about like if you ever, did you ever plan that you were gonna settle in the UK when you were growing up in Macau because like you know when we grow up we're like oh where are we gonna be are we gonna stay here I don't know like did you ever think you were gonna stay in the UK no I had no plans I don't I don't think that I really was someone who had a plan I kind of just went with the flow um, and then got a job and then 
I could afford to live my life here. So I just carried on doing that. And, you know, here we are so many years later. But, so nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did. Well, I suppose you guys moved to where you guys are now. Yeah. Bit, is that right? Like five years ago. Okay. And yeah. you, yes. As well. Same, same. We oh, moved okay. similar, same, similar time. Coincidentally, to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, her to New York and me to Florida. Yeah. And, then, and yeah. then I saw on her story, it tagged New Jersey. I'm like, what the freak? You're in New Jersey? I'm We're like in the same time zone. Away. I know, right? It's wild. Like, to find out someone that you know lives nearby now, it's like the most mind blowing thing, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, that is nice. I feel like that makes a difference. Like my best friend, you might know her, Bethany. She also yeah. only lives like 10, 15 minutes away. And I think like, that's like the, that's the best. Like, where's my heart, you know? Yeah. I mean, okay. It does make sense now. Like you have yeah. your brothers there. You have your best yeah. friend there. <laughs> you could, Yeah. That's all you need. You know, Macau yeah, is great, amazing. but you literally like bump into every single person, you know? Uh, I think, I, yeah, I guess, I guess so. I haven't really like, thought about it so structuredly as you've just put it but I guess most of like the close people to me are physically close as well so yeah yeah Yeah. so it does make sense because like I think for us before we started this podcast I was like we don't really have anyone that feels like home around us I mean obviously we have our partners but like you know it's not Macau yeah and the first thing we ate was yes so nice I've seen around you Dude, yeah, you, like, like in, in uh, no, Newark, uh, in New, New Jersey, Jersey, there's like, a community of Brazilian Portuguese people. And there's literally like street signs with the Portuguese flag, and and there's it's like a rough a, area though. <laughs> a place called Newark in like um New Jersey, yeah, in yeah. New Jersey, yeah. it's like kind of rough, but it's a like very high Portuguese population. You can see Portuguese like pastel de nata, like two mm-hmm. shops with right beside each other. It's, it's so like cool. a chain of them. Oh, that's yeah, so good. So and good. so every time I go, I buy a dozen, and I oh, so nice. <laughs> yeah, but by me, Florida, not really. So that's the problem with the yeah, like places. I guess it depends, right? If there's a higher population of stuff, <laughs> uh, yeah. I know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's nice like adjusting to like living in a different country because I feel like. I feel like it's nice to kind of feel like, oh, okay, I can be independent. But yeah. at the same time, sometimes I'm I'm like, why did I move out so early? <laughs> a little bit. Like, I, I feel like a little like, oh, why did I, like, why? I was so longing to leave Macau. I don't know mm-hmm. about you guys, because Macau is pretty small. And like, you know, uh, luckily I could travel and kind of see the other places. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, I want to, I want to get out. I want to like move out somewhere. And then yeah. now I'm here. I'm like, oh. I leave so I left so early. Why was I so desperate to leave? But then I go back to Macau and visit. And after a day, after a few days, I'm like, okay, I understand why I left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Just, yeah. <laughs> it's so cramped. Oh, yeah, no, it's true. It's like you know, I would compare it to my parents like moving away from their place, like. You yeah, know, they moved out too. We all just got to move out. Like, and honestly, I feel closer to my parents, kind of like having distance. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I agree. You want I agree. to appreciate more, right? The longer you, the further you are, the more you appreciate. Like, talk yeah. about appreciation. Like, which <laughs> which Cantonese or Macanese dish are you like craving? Top three. Mm. Top three. Three. See, that's a really difficult question, right? <laughs> we're, we're making it hard for you. First, it was now, one, now but then three. one was always so hard. But three, oh, so hard. <laughs> Well, I'm going to say this because these days I'm vegetarian, so I can't Ooh, eat meat. Oh, you are. Darn it. Yeah, name the vegetarian. Oh. oh. It's like a tasu, and I think oh. that's like one of the hardest things. It is. Like, make some good vegetarian tasu, but I can't mm. find that over here. But if I could, right? I think a tasu, siu mei. I love those things. Sam siu. Mm-hmm. They do have a vegetarian place, like in um, Macau. They have so like, sick, food, so sick. They oh, have good. I would like to go there because I think they would make like the best fake meat. Yeah, but, like, yeah. Right, they're best. actually really good at like making really delicious vegetarian food. Even oh, Taiwan, like. Have you guys been? Huh? Have you guys been to the so sick? 
Uh, no. I have mm-hmm. like with Alan, you know, Alan, the DJ that's vegan. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you for the, sure. Mm-hmm. I miss that so much. I miss seeing hanging meats. Oh, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, I, I like gokju pa fang. Oh. I miss that. Or like. I also like gokju pa yi fun. I think Ooh. I still like Gokju pa yi fun. Wow. I just like gokju pa as a thing. But. That's cool. You just can't. You just can't find like Macanese dupes anywhere else. I don't think uh, Macanese <laughs> dupes anywhere else. Yeah. Wait, what's a what's a dupes? Like a <laughs> dupe, like a copy, like a duplicate. Oh, oh. yeah. A four, A four. Oh, A four. Yum! All those dishes sound good. It's so funny how you said it's- the bake, right? The bake. Every time, like I'm trying to be healthy, I say I ask for bake. Yeah. But it's not that much healthier. It's just so much more cheese. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what are your choices? Uh, my go-to for Cantonese food. I actually really like just like Pei Dan Sao Yo Jo. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, my I, God. Yeah. yeah, sorry. What's where, 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 where? I was going to say that reminds me of Ju Chang Fun. Do you know what's... Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So good. Like you don't have chu chang fun. You can only, I feel like you can only really buy chu chang fun, and like those those breakfast places. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh huh. Like, we we don't get that here. Like when we go yam cha dim sum, you don't have it. You have like cha siu cheng or ha cheng. Oh, you it's not the gun. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. It's so funny good. though that it's called chu chang fun, but there's no chu because it looks like a. Future. Maybe it's because it's like wrapped super tight. You know? Literally. Yeah. I always oh, like. Oh, it looks like the pig's intestine. That's why. Yeah. That's why. And then <laughs> when you switch the word, it's fun turn, which is actually intestines. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, on my Instagram, like, for you page, like, it's like food because I like to cook. And then, yeah. Because <laughs> I can't, you know, you can't duplicate the food, like you said. So you have to bake it at home. But there's one version where I see, like, they make, you know, those Vietnamese rice paper like looking yeah. thing and then if you wet it it becomes like moist and you wrap it they were making like charm fun with that I've seen, I've seen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you tried it i haven't but i'm intrigued i, I don't have, is it good i i, I have but so. then i don't know i mean i haven't did you it's like whole oh, no like yeah like, yeah I tried it. it's like mm, mm. i, I think like, i did it fun. wrong yeah, because it's got stuck together, you know? Like, And it's like, oh my god, I'm having like five pieces of like... Like, together. Chang Fun, when you bite into it, it's just like, you know, it, you, it's easy. But yeah. this was like, I was like chewing on it. I mean, you can imagine, the, you can see if they, they do it like, you know, they they whole they don't chalk them out. Like, you know, when they make it, like freaking like pen. They, no, you can't replicate that. It's like, yeah. My favorite would be like any street food. Like oh, just yeah. like you done. Give me that mystery sauce, that mystery kale sauce, please. You like, do you like ngao dab? Oh yes. Yeah, I used to love ngao dab as well. <laughs> Dude, the one, the one in Kunyakai, like I yeah. went there recently. It's so, it's always so packed. The line super long for ao dab, like a fifty mop um yeah. ao dab, and so it's like so. Yeah, it's, it's so always a proud. long line. But I also, like, even though in New York City, like, it's pretty diverse, so it's easy for me to find Cantonese food, I can't really find Nao Zap. Like, that's hard to harder to find. Yeah. Because yeah. not a lot of people like to see, I guess. It's like, they're like, oh, interesting. Why would you eat that? <laughs> yeah. It's so it, good. It's like something with the texture. So good though. It's just, but it's you can tell it's just to please the the locals because you know I mean there's tacos and stuff that they have lingua you know the tongue right remember we had that like the that's ox- that's more Mexican like, yeah 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 but but you see like they have it like as a secret item menu like that people like would order like locals would order because they don't want to like you know oh like oh, okay. it's not In fun. they do no lay as well. Yeah, they love that. Yeah, how do they eat ao lei? In Macau, I don't, I can't remember how they cook it, but it's like, yeah, I think it's sure. supposed to be like a Portuguese dish, but really it's a Macanese, Macanese. It's like an adapted Portuguese dish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ao lei, right? Yeah, I think so. They use every part. 
for sure. You know, it's just, it's what I'm, it is. I'm curious how your, I know, like, obviously Chinese Portuguese, so your parents probably met in Macau. I'm curious yeah. how did they, like, were they already living in Macau or, like, and, and do they understand each other's language? Like, did they both speak Chinese? Well, they communicated in English. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, but my parents, they both moved to Macau separately and then they met in Macau in the 80s. In the 80s. 80s. Yeah. So, so your, your mom's dad not is from Macau. No, my dad is Portuguese from Portugal mm-hmm. and he migrated there for work. And your mom? My mom is from Guangzhou in China. Oh, Guangzhou, yeah. Ooh, that is like very, like, really OG, it seems like, you know, like, because it's like, Guangdongyan kind of came to Macau, right? And then Portuguese, Port- from Portugal to Macau, like, Macanese! <laughs> you know? Because that, that's, like, that's the argument of people, like, oh, you're not really Macanese if you don't have any blood, like, Portuguese blood. Like, you're just... But who knows? So you are 100%. <laughs> you can't, like, people can't argue with you. No, they can't. Not really. I, I do tell them uh, when I when I meet, uh, like, new people, I'm like... I'm the, a classic Macanese, as sound, that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Classic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, like, uh, if, is there anything else that you want to share? Um, it was just nice catching up with you guys. It was great, yes. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I, I think, just... Yeah. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, I think... It would be interesting to like hear how you have found settling into the US, but you may have shared that in the past. I mean, no, it's okay. can, yeah, like I, so, so when I came here, yeah, like it was based, it, 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 mine, it was like a um, culture shock in a good way almost. Like, because you just, moved there because you, uh, you moved yeah. There? Yeah. Well, yeah, my boy, my my boyfriend at that time, he was teaching in Macau. Uh, I met him there, uh, mm-hmm. fell in love, and then um, yeah, we. I, I was like tired of working in Macau because you know my situation. I'm not a resident, and mm-hmm. I was like kind of just uh, accepting whatever job I had, which was a very stressful job in the hotel. But um, I was like, you know what? I prefer to. To even like go to Philippines and try out my chances there, you know, see what job I can get. I know I would get paid like dirt, but I was like, I need to just get out of Macau, you know, because experience at least like one year. That's what I felt like at that time. And Ty, like the guy that I was, I'm with, like he's like, how about come to America with me? Like let's let's like I see a future with you. So if you see a future with me, why not we go together? And I'm like. Ah, yay! Yes, please! Sure! (laughs) But yeah, and basically that, like that. And uh, long story short, because obviously the whole like immigrating and stuff is the most stressful part, Mm -hmm. right? After all that, like, yeah, settled in here. But as you know, like, COVID happened. So honestly, these past five years just gone by so quick. And I didn't even realize. Plus, I've been working from home, you know, since the pandemic. Yeah. So, yeah, I've just been like grinding, secluded. yeah, <laughs> grinding, and I just feel very, very um, di- like other than our podcast, very distant from Macau. Obviously, like I'm. That's why I'm so thankful that we started our podcast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only like culture shock I ever got was people like just always. Um, always like complimenting complimenting me. yeah like Your hair my... skin tone like it's completely opposite in macau and you you probably That's know that nice. too i mean it's nice yeah but i don't know how to accept compliments i'm just like <laughs> yeah. like i i keep i always try to me yeah, yeah or i would like you know try to say something bad about myself to even it out or something <laughs> like that like what's wrong with me yeah <laughs> but yeah. yeah something like that but what about you what yasmin uh what was the question how we moved here <laughs> oh, how you found it settling into the u.s oh um yeah i mean similar story to her i guess like like i found my husband traveling i was traveling in europe because mm-hmm. i did like gap years between university and high school like high school and university and um i mean 
it's like it's it's okay I think I luckily was able to find friends in my college years and here we say college so um yeah in my college years and I like I'm still close to them so that definitely helped like the you know the transition and like yeah um and I guess I came here first, like as a student and like, I was also culture shock with how easy the school was, <laughs> at least some things, some things are easy. Like it's weird because they take high school math classes and university and then they're like, yeah, all schools do that. I'm like, why? Like, it's like a generic, like credit for credits. I don't know. It, it was weird. Um, but then after school, like looking for a job, I don't know. I feel like I like it. I, I like it because of the, uh, like how it's just not like you know click clamped. oh click oh yeah because okay. yeah, I feel I like in Macau so. like they're so like clicky you know like they want you to speak it's true and I right and I don't think I had any click in Macau and I like had friends here and there but it's not like I wasn't part of any gang <laughs> not gang but like you know like a friend friend group so um it was I think I like yeah I, I liked it here the only thing that I really really miss was food like that yeah. was that was the bigger thing for me and so I was always like looking for places around me that had food and that's how I found the Portuguese tart and going to Chinatown um but like other than than food like everything was I, I like it yeah yeah um I can't believe that um Pajeli, you're not a resident Oh, yeah. So funny because the other day I was FaceTiming my mom, you know, she's like, you know, so funny because you, when you're born, you are immediately Im immigrant. <laughs> I'm like, because it's true. Like in Macau, it's like it follows the Portuguese law, I guess, like that if you're Horrible. born there, you don't get residency. It's like it, it depends mm. if your parents has residency. So automatically yeah. I'm a Filipino like citizen because of my mom, but not a resident to anywhere. The, which which is yeah it's it's weird I feel like when we were born that was when the laws were changing and and like I don't know how like we became resident and then you guys yeah so no. it's like I think it was like uh within a period of time if you don't do this kind of thing like and I think my parents were just lucky that they kind of did it and we were able to be yeah, resident and that makes was, us a big yeah. difference it was a different time back then where, where it was easier for skilled workers to get a oh, white yeah. card, a.k.a. a residency yeah. card. And that, yeah. my parents weren't skilled workers. Like, my mom was a cleaner and my dad was a driver. So, like, we've been immigrants, like, literally, from the start. But, you know, my parents always had, like, they, like us, never, like, planned to be in that Macau the whole time. They were like actually wanting Hong to go Kong? to Hong Kong, mm. if anything. Yeah, but never. They even got married in Hong Kong, so it's like it never got. Yeah, like it. I guess go with the flow until the flow gets you. And then twenty 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 eight years later. Yeah. Still there. Yeah. Still there. Yeah, and my <laughs> sisters still have the same issues with their residency. Like after eighteen, they ha they're on their own. You know, they gotta have at least a visa. That, yeah. That's yeah, that's not right, I don't think. But also that sucks. I know, yeah. We learned to cope with it and like because we have to accept it. Because as we said, Macau is super small. Now like now you can't even um like my old coworkers in the hotel that had kids in Macau, they can't stay because they can't attach their kids to their blue card anymore. Like it used to be a thing where you can, you know, like me yeah. being attached to my mom, but now you can't do that anymore. It's like they're like, oh, if you have a kid, go. We'll 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 get another person anyways. To like to to replace your spot. Like, it's that's that so, ruthless. Yeah, it's so inhumane, right? Gosh. Yeah. So true though, because I mean, even mainlanders that work there that you know get like um that a blue card. I've seen like uh, supervisors in the hotels like work there for ten years, and they're like you know top of their job. They're they stay like after hours. It's insane, but then. One day you just see them packing up their box, like boxes mm. and leaving. And like, what's wrong? What happened? Gao quota. That's mm. what he said. Not enough quota to hire blue card. And that's why they had to cut her. I'm like, what? And I'm like, when when am I next? You know? Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, so it does make sense that you, you know, you wanted to get out of there because like everything was so uncertain. Yeah. Right. And you you need some yeah. stability or certainty that you can stay. Exactly. It's just like a little appreciation goes a long way. A little know? shang chi. <laughs> oh, shang chi, please. It's not as inclusive. So I guess yeah. Once once I once you do come out. It, you see the yeah. Western world. Yeah, it's. I was gonna say it sounds weird saying come out and go back, but like, <laughs> I feel like once you experience something else, it's almost hard to go back and turn a blind eye. Yeah, different perspective. Yeah, that, like that's 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 life, people. You know, you grow yeah. up and you learn different things, and you open your your view to like yeah, way more. For sure. Yeah, for anyone that feels stuck or you know, like you feel like you don't belong or you just feel unhappy all the time, literally, like think about moving because. J- I mean, I know it's like a very, very like, oh, yo, you can just move anywhere you want, huh? Like, I mean, think about it, though, because it does like give you a wide respect perspective and, you know, you can learn. But yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you so much for this talk. And this is this been great. And and, you know, like, let us know um, any any uh, upcoming new things. In your yeah. Life? Like shout out your your canto, your canto. Uh... Oh, you can you can. You can right there. <laughs> <laughs> there, wherever it is. Oh, wow. I'm trying really hard to make like Cantonese videos a few times a week, but it's hard with like a full time job. But for I'm sure, trying. we get I'm it. Trying. We get it, guys. Follow her. She has a lot of Cantonese content vlogs. So like, check her out if you're in the UK or anywhere in the world. Yep. That's the beauty. Yep, yep. Uh, Thanks for having me on, guys. It was really nice to catch up, oh and. Congrats on your um, Cantonese course. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, trying to get more people to join our <laughs> side. Yes, if there's any students listening, go follow Inesh, you know, like you can learn a lot of Cantonese while watching yes. her videos. Well, first do your course so you have a <laughs> understanding of Cantonese, then you can come and watch my videos. There you go. I know what I'm like talking that. about. There you, know? you go. <laughs> Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you so much. You did just a great episode. Good luck. Kyle, we hope to see more more reels and hope to see you go viral and like more collabs with other UK Canto creators. Yes, let us know if you want to collab something too. (laughs) You know, we're we're, we're here. Hola. Hola, hola. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thanks for listening.